Hi class. Today we're going to finish up talking about the five senses of the body and we're going to finish up with hearing, the sense of hearing. So you may have wondered, how do we hear sounds? And how are those sounds measured? The sounds that we hear, how do we measure those? Do they on a scale? What, what do we do uh, to measure the sounds that we hear? We're going to talk about that today, okay? So hearing is the sense that enables humans to listen to sounds through a coordinated effort between the ear, which is a organ, an organ of hearing and balance, um, and the brain. Sounds are produced by movements of air, known as sound waves, which travel through the air and are picked up by the ear. Now, um, they travel deep into the ear, um, where there are special cells called receptors. Now, these receptors, we've been talking about on this whole study, they receive information that sounds and about sounds, and then they send that information to the brain. So there are receptors deep into the ear that turn these sound waves into information for the brain, which then we hear. So that's how we come up with that. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the structure of our ear first. Okay, we're going to start out with that. Now, this is a picture of some of the inner workings of our ear, and I'm going to point out to some of these to you, okay? It's considered to have three different parts. Um, we have the outer ear, which is this line here, um, all the way down, and then the inner or the middle ear, which is this these lines here, all the way down, and the outer and the inner ear. Sorry, that was confusing. Outer, middle, inner. There you go. So the outer ear consists of the auricle, and that's spelled A-U-R-I-C-L-E. I'll put that under the comments there. And it's the out um, in the outer auditory canal. So here is the this little uh, right out here is the auricle, and it's the visible part of the ear, which is a flap of cartilage that is attached to the side of the head by muscles and ligaments. Now the auricle's unique curved shape is designated to capture sound waves traveling through the air. After being collected by the auricle, sound waves travel into the outer auditory canal. A tube-like structure lined with fine hairs and cerumen, a waxy substance we call earwax. And what that does is it traps dirt, keeps, keeps uh, anything from getting into your ear. Sound waves travel through the outer auditory canal, right here, um, until they reach the next section of the ear known as the middle ear. All right, so now we're on to our middle ear. The auditory canal of the outer ear leads to the middle ear. It's a small chamber inside the skull that consists of the eardrum, this white part, um, and a chain of three small bones called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. Three small bones, the hammer, anvil, and the stirrup, and this is all connected to the eardrum. And these uh, three bones are known as the ear ossicles, ossicles. Um, and that means that they're separate, but they are um, they're separate, but they're linked by very small joints. So these are actually three separate pieces, but linked by very small joints. <clears throat> okay, let me turn my page. The eardrum is a thin, round membrane. That's this again, this white part, similar to the tightly stretched skin of a drum head, which separates the outer ear from the middle ear. Sound waves traveling through the auditory canal. Uh, strike the eardrum and cause it to vibrate. The sound vibrations are picked up by the ossicles, which then vibrate in turn. The first ossicle to vibrate is the hammer, the tiny, the, the tiny hammer-shaped bone. That's right here. <clears throat> the hammer passes along the sound vibrations to the next ossicle, the anvil, which is right here an equally tiny but anvil-shaped bone. From the anvil, the vibrations are passed along to the next, next ossicle, the stirrup. Now, an interesting thing about the stirrup, it's a stirrup-shaped bone that is famous for being the smallest bone in the human body. After passing through the stirrup, the sound vibrations travel through a small membrane called the oval window, oval, as in the shape, window, which separates the middle ear from the third and final section of the ear, the inner ear, right here. So let's talk about the inner ear. What's going on there? 
The inner ear consists of an elaborate system of small chambers, membranes, and fluid-filled tubes that serve function in hearing and in balance. Balance being the body's ability to be stable and steady. The main part for hearing in the inner ear is the cochlea, cochlea a snail-shaped fluid-filled structure. Now that is obviously this because it looks like a snail and it's filled with fluid. And this is the main part for hearing in the inner ear. Let's talk about it. Um, after sound vibrations pass from the middle ear to the inner ear through the oval window, they travel into the cochlea and through the cochlea's fluid, which begins to vibrate. Inside the cochlea is an even smaller spiral-shaped organ called the organ of corti, which is lined with thousands of tiny hairs and nerve cells. In the organ of corti, the tiny hairs shake from the sound vibrations. The shaking hairs tug on nerve cells, which then trigger signals that travel to the brain. And it goes along this little piece up here called the auditory nerve. So these tiny hairs are shaking because of what the sound waves that are coming through here and the vibrations that are happening here. And then that sends a message through this auditory nerve, which goes to the brain, those receptors. Like here they are again. They're going to the brain. The brain receives these signals and interprets them into what humans experience as sound. Now, here's something else interesting. We talked about that hearing, uh, your ear is good for hearing and balance. So let's talk about um, a little bit about balance. The inner ear also contains structures unrelated to hearing called the semicircular canals, which contribute to the body's ability to feel stable and balanced. The semicircular canals contain fluids tiny hairs, nerve cells, and other components that interact to give the brain messages about the body's position in space. If the body's position is off balance, the brain then sends messages to the body's muscles, which will move in appropriate ways to correct the, the balance problem. Uh, without the stability provided by the balancing structures in the inner ear, people would feel disoriented and permanently dizzy. They would not have a sense of where the different parts of their bodies were and would not be able to perform everyday activities such as standing, sitting, or walking. So that's very important too. Very, very important. Uh, your ear is very important for balance as well. Okay, so let's talk about um, how we measure sound. So, you know, we know now that sound waves come into the ear and things start vibrating from the outer ear to the middle ear to the inner ear. And then those vibrations uh, in the fluid of the cochlea cause uh, the auditory nerve to send receptors to the brain. But how do we measure the sounds that we experience, okay? So let's talk about that real quick. Um, the speed at which sound waves travel through the air, now this is not in the air, this is through the air. Sound waves are traveling through the air um, that's referred to as frequency, the speed at which they travel. And that is the term for how often a sound wave completes a cycle of vibration in one second. All right. So in one second, the frequency that, you, that you're given, um, it depends on how many cycles that vibration has in one second. Frequency of sound waves is measured in units called hertz, H-E-R-T-Z, um, the short form is H-Z. Most humans can hear sounds that range from about 15 hertz to 18,000 hertz. A sound at 15 hertz is very low, and a sound at 18 hertz is very high. The lowness, the lowness or highness of a sound is called is pitch. All right, you've heard that the pitch of a sound is the lowness, lowness or the highness of that sound. An example of a sound with a very high frequency and therefore a very high pitch is the sound produced by dog whistles. Um, these high whistles are beyond what we can hear as humans, but can easily be heard by dogs as they hear higher frequencies than humans. The loudness or softness of a sound is measured in a unit known as a decibel. So now we're talking about, we're talking about the highness and, and the lowness. Now we're talking about the, the, the uh, loudness and the softness of a sound, okay? So the same, uh, the same sound can either be uh, really, really loud or really, really, you know, em emphasized, or it can be, you know, very, very quiet and very, very um, low. 
So humans can hear sounds ranging from zero decibels to 120 decibels, decibels being the measurement of how high or low something sounds, or sorry, uh, soft or loud, how soft or loud something is. A whisper is about 10 decibels, a rock concert about 110 decibels. Um, too many decibels can cause pain in the ear as well as temporary or permanent hearing loss. Many people with hearing loss rely on sign language. So if, you know, if you do have hearing loss, you guys have been learning about sign language in some of your specialist classes. That is how people uh, talk whenever they cannot actually hear sounds. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's see. People can also hear another quality in the sounds besides loudness and pitch. Um, tone is the quality that makes a sound unique. It is because of tone that people can hear and recognize the difference between, voice, between the voice of a friend and another friend, or between the sound of a guitar and a mandolin. The ear is considered, um, so the ear is considered essential because of that reason. What it's doing is it's taking in this information and it's, it's, it's um, compartmentalizing the sounds that we hear into different pitches, um, tones and, uh, sorry, um, that's the pitch. Oh, okay. And whether or not it's loud or soft. All right. So we're going to do a little demonstration here. Um, it shouldn't take just a few minutes and we'll demonstrate this to you. Now, uh, first off, I want you to do is, um, listen for just a moment while I get out this next thing. I just want you to just stay quiet for like for like 15, 20 seconds and take in the sounds that you hear, okay? Okay. <clears throat> so now you're gonna hear various sounds Okay, and I want you to listen closely for the pitch um, of these sounds. Now, again, pitch is going to be the highness or lo lowness of what you're hearing, okay? Between those two sounds, do you think that the pitch dropped or came up? The pitch came up. Okay, it started from here. So that is because one uh, was very, very low and the other was a much higher, much higher pitch. Okay, here's another one. Okay, so for that one, the same thing. We started low and then we went high. Let's try one more. That sound, we started high, and then we went low. So the pitch varies in each one of those, okay? Um, <clears throat> so um, we can also do this uh, when we're trying to figure out what the decibel is. So again, decibels are if something is very, um, if something is very soft or something is very loud, okay? So let's... let's um, Let's remember also that the volume of a sound is measured uh, through, through this. So whenever you turn up the volume in your radio, that is an example of you turning up the decimals. Okay, so let's, let's find that here. Listen closely. Now what you should have heard there was that the first sound was not as loud as the second sound. Okay, so one was softer than the other. Okay, let's do it again. That is a difference right there in <clears throat> the loudness and softness and the softness of it. So you have two sounds um, and that is going to be measured in the decibel. So one of those would have a higher decibel than the other. The louder one would have a higher decibel than the softer one. Um, so this can also be demonstrated in a way of like, 
whether we are talking like we're, we're whispering something like this. Hamburger. Hamburger. Or we shout it, Hamburger! Okay, so those are both examples of something that would be different decibels, okay? Um, let's talk about the final thing, which was tone. Now, it's hard to demonstrate tone because that is more like if we're talking amongst each other in class, if, if, my, if my back is to your class or to the class, um, I can tell a difference between two of the students in my classroom talking, okay? I can tell the difference between Eden talking and Imogen talking, okay? It's because they have different tones. Or Caden talking and Dev talking, they have different tones. Um, so we can tell a difference in that um, that's what the tone is. It's, it's that there's a, something that is different about one sound and the other, okay? Um, it makes the sound unique. I think the book mentioned something about a difference in a mandolin and a guitar, okay? It's very unique there. So um, what you can do is, um, as your little activity journal for today, um, I want you to um, find several sounds, common sounds like a car or um, a whisper or a rock concert. Um, find the decibels the estimated decibels that each one of those would be. You would have to research this online. Just a quick uh, search engine search, and you can find, I want you to do at least five common sounds. Find the decibels, the average decibels for five common sounds. Okay, look them up, jot them down on a piece of paper or in your journal, um, and we can, um, <clears throat> we can possibly look at those whenever we come back. Okay, so that's gonna be our activity for today. A um, couple extra things. Um, did you know, which I find these really interesting, this kind of goes along with our curriculum. This one we actually did talk about when we were talking about the ocean, strangely enough, uh, going uh, deep into the ocean or, or going high, high in the mountains. We talk about our ears, right? How the balance and how whenever you go really low, or really high, your ears pop and you have that uncomfortable feeling. So let's talk about what that is again. Uh, this is just a different way of saying it. Now, there are eustachian tubes, and I wanna show you where that would be. So remember here, we were talking about the inner ear. This right here is the eustachian tube. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. Those are small tubes that connect the middle ear to the throat. Connects your ear to your throat. When people fly in airplanes, their ears can feel plugged up um, from rapid changes in air pressure. This plugged up sensation is from unequal air pressure between the outer ear and the middle ear, which are separated by the eardrum. By yawning or swallowing, the eustachian tubes allow air to enter the middle ear from the throat, thereby equalizing the pressure between the outer and middle ear and relieving pressure on the eardrum. People feel the equalizing of pressure as popping sensation, after which their ears do not feel plugged up. So whenever you yawn or like, you know, you go up high in an airplane and you feel that uncomfortable feeling in your ears, um, your ears start hurting, well, yawning or swallowing usually take care of it because air is coming up from your throat to this eustachian tube right here, and it is equalizing the pressure. So once the pressure is equalized, then your ear feels fine. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, last thing, compared to many other animals, humans have very good hearing. However, some, some animals such as cats, dogs, dolphins, and bats can hear much higher frequencies than humans. Frequencies, once again, is the speed at which sound waves travel through the air, okay? So a frequency is the speed at which it travels. And um, whenever a sound wave completes a cycle of vibration in one second, that's the frequency of that sound. So animals, some animals can hear much higher frequencies than we can, which is why dog whistles work so well. We can't hear them, but dogs can hear them. Um, and these sounds are called ultrasonic. So that's what I wanted to say about that. So if you have a dog, they can hear things that you can't. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, we're just under 20 minutes. Um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and hope to see you here real soon. Okay.